since he had watched her abroad a plane to a life of studies abroad. He smiled reminiscing the day of their wedding. She looked so small and fragile, her blue eyes filled with uncertainty. Despite the unusual circumstance of their marriage, Tran had found himself captivated by her. She was unlike anyone he had ever met. Intelligent, responsible, and endearingly cute. He would often catch glimpses of her watering the plants in the garden, dressed in a cute frock that made her look like a delicate doll. Her presence had been a strange comfort to him, a light in the darkness of his world. As he neared the arrival hall, Tan's heart pounded harder. He sent her away, wanting her to achieve what she deserved. In the solitude of these five years, he had realized how deeply had he come to care for her. Tan arrived at the arrival hall, his eyes scanned the crowd for familiar face. His breath hissed when he saw her. Wan stood there looking more mature yet just as beautiful as he remembered. Her eyes met his and for a moment the words seemed to stop. Then she stepped closer and said with a smile, her voice soft. There was a mixture of emotions in their gazes that they couldn't name. They stood there for a moment just taking each other in. They noticed the slight changes in her and you found confidence in her posture, a subtle elegance in the way she carried herself. But her eyes were the same, filled with the warmth that had always drawn him to her. You have changed. He mumbled, a small smile tugged at his lips. So have you. She replied, returning his smile. He patted her head. Let's go home. Grandpa is waiting for you. He held her hand gently while Tham's men took her luggage. She nodded, feeling a jolt of electricity shoot through her as his fingers brushed against hers. Wine's feelings had only deepened for him. She glanced at him, his face as stoic and unreadable as ever. She wondered if he felt the same as she did, if his heart was pounding against his chest, if his thoughts were a chaotic mix of hope and fear. The drive home was in silence. Both of them lost in their thoughts. Tan led her inside the mansion, where everything seemed both familiar and foreign after so many years. Welcome back, Wan. Grandpa was waiting for them in the living room. Wan smiled and stepped closer to him. Thank you, Grandpa. This house was so empty without you. Tan saw a flicker of something in her eyes, a mirrored longing that made his heart ache. I have missed everything, everyone so much, she mumbled. The set while the maid brought refreshments. Tan received a call and walked out while Grandpa and Wan were engrossed in a conversation. Next day, the whole night Tan didn't return home. Wan woke up in the morning and found him asleep beside her. She assumed he must have arrived at midnight. Wan had breakfast with Grandpa and prepared lunch for Tan as she knew he would wake up by noon. The wine was sitting comfortably on the couch in the living room. Her phone kept on the coffee table. She was on a video call with her best friend abroad. You have got to visit soon, Wan. I miss you here. She chuckled. I miss you too, but I'm glad to be home. She said with a soft smile. Just then, Tham woke in, his hair slightly tousled from sleep. He stopped in his tracks and narrowed his eyes slightly, taking in the scene before him. Why noticed his presence and felt a small flutter in her stomach. She quickly excused herself from the call. Good morning, Tham. She greeted him with a soft smile. Good morning. He said, still glaring at the phone in her hand. Who was that? Just a friend from abroad, she said casually. A male friend, he asked with raised brows, his voice carrying a hint of jealousy and stepped closer to her. Yes, is there a problem? She pressed her smile. Yes, there's a problem. He grabbed her hair and pulled her face closer to his. Tan's eyes met hers. The intensity of his gaze made her heart skip a bit. You can't have male friends, he said in a low whisper. Wan felt tiny in front of him. He's just a friend. You don't have to worry, she said with a pout out of habit. To you, he's just a friend. But what if for him you're not just a friend? I don't want anyone to imagine things about my little wife. He said staring at her lips and rubbing his thumb over her lips. I worked hard and blinked several times. But I can't just end up my friendship with him. He doesn't have interest in me, I swear. She said with an innocent face. He raised his brows. 
Fine, then I must have a few words with him if you want to continue your friendship with him. She stared at him helplessly and nodded. Okay, but don't talk to him as a mafia, but my husband. Tan nodded, bringing his hand down to her neck. Where's Grandpa? He had an appointment. Tan nodded and stood back. Lunch is ready, come. She said, holding his hand and dragging him to the dining room like a kid. Tan smiled and sat. As they ate together, they chatted about small things, her experiences abroad, his work, and the little changes in the house. It felt surprisingly normal, a comfortable routine forming between them. You have always been a great cook. Wan blushed at the compliment. Thanks. Grandpa is throwing a small party in a week to celebrate your return. That's so sweet of him, she said with a smile, almost clapping her hands. Tan chuckled, staring at her with affection. Anyways, did you return late at night? She asked the lingering question in her mind. Yeah, I had to do some work while. He asked with raised brows. Nothing, just curious. She said, shaking her head. Does Liana still work with you? Then smiled and nodded, understanding why she was curious about his return. Do you think I had cheated on you in these five years? He asked, standing and leaning closer to her. Flustered wine swiftly shook her head in denial. No, but Liana had been trying to hit on you. She looked at him and said through her teeth. She is a pervert. Then chuckled, flicking her forehead. I haven't interacted with her all this while, believe me. You don't have to be insecure. No one's allowed to take your place in my life and heart. He pressed a long kiss on her forehead with devotion and affection, while smiled, letting out a sigh of relief. At party, Wan met her parents and friends here. Today was the party day and the mansion was alive with music and laughter when the guests mingled, celebrating Wan's return. Wan was dressed in a baby pink moonlight shimmering gown. Throughout the evening, Tim found himself glancing at her frequently. She moved with grace, a smile lighting up the room. Tim was captivated by the way she smiled, talked, and laughed. He was staring at her when Grandpa's voice grabbed his attention. I see, young man, you have been gawking at her for a while now. It's creepy. He patted his shoulder, Tim smiled. Not at all. She's my wife. I can stare at her how I want. Grandpa smiled. Weren't you against this marriage? How come you changed this much? I thought you didn't like her, that's why you sent her abroad. He fixed his gaze on Grandpa and shook his head. I was falling for her and I didn't want her to be distracted by me. I wanted her to achieve what she deserves. Grandpa nodded and went away as someone came to him. He walked to wine and grabbed her arm. What happened? She asked as he dragged her away. He parted his lips to speak but a young lady approached them. Hi, Mr. Kim. Mrs. Yen shook hand with him. She gazed at Wine. Have you met your wife yet? And who is this beautiful lady? Wine passed her a smile and greeted her. She is. Mrs. Yen cut him off. She must be your sister. I really like this girl. Is she single? I am looking for a girl for my younger brother. She patted Wine's cheek, who blushed while pressing her lips to hide her smile. And glanced his joke, laying a tentative Mrs. Yen. Mrs. Yun, this is Quine, my wife. He protectively snaked his arm around Quine's waist and said through gritted teeth. Mrs. Yun smiled awkwardly. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't recognize her. Actually, she's too young, just like a doll. She softly pinched Quine's cheeks. It's okay, Mrs. Yun. Quine responded with a smile. Then tightened his grip around her with a displeased expression. Soon, Mrs. Yun walked away. Then let out a sigh. That was rude. What? He asked with raised brows. Your attitude. She made you my sister and what else did she say? Didn't you hear? She lied you for her bloody brother. When giggled, she just misunderstood. Your expressions were so funny. He pulled her closer. He blessed at her statement. Seeking problem for yourself. He said in a low tone and rubbed his cheek against hers. One stood still, her heart thumped as if it would peek out. I know. She couldn't form right words. Temple away with a smile. You look breathtaking tonight, he mumbled, wine grinned mysteriously. You don't look so bad yourself. She wrapped her arms around his neck. Then smiled at her boldness. He was glad that she was comfortable with him. And see this one, you're stunning. It's like you have grown even more beautiful in these five years. He cupped the side of her neck and kissed her cheek. Wine's heart fluttered, feeling his soft lips on her cheek. Their moment was interrupted by Liana's sharp voice. I think I interrupt 
in a moment. When I stared at her with disdain, I let out a sigh holding her close. Of course you did. She smiled, shaking her head and ignoring mine, who clenched her fist, nursing her admiring gaze of fourth hand. Dad wants to meet you. I'm busy now. I'll meet him when I feel like it. Liana rolled her eyes. Come on, Tim. It's not like you're a newlywed couple. Stop blinking. Wine frowned and spoke as she couldn't stand her anymore. Why does it bother you? Who are you to question him? Why do you cling to him when he's clearly not interested in you? Don't speak in others' matters, especially then when you are known. She spoke, staring at her fiercely. Then smiled and raised his brother to Liana. Got your answer? No leave. Liana stomped away while Wine let out a sigh. Calm down, little wife. He reached out his hand to touch her face, but she moved away. You'll not work with her anymore, she said furiously with a pout. Don't resist my touch. He pulled her closer and said coldly, You wouldn't work with her anymore. He nodded and was about to speak, but Wine's sister came and dragged her away. Throughout the party, Wine was with her family. She saw Tham with Liana once more and ignored him. Later at night, Grandpa headed to the village while Wine was drunk and slept, so Tham didn't get the chance to talk to her. Next morning, Wine woke up with a throbbing head. She groaned softly, burying her face in the crook of Tham's neck. She opened her eyes and looked at his sleeping face. She wanted to see his peaceful sight forever. Good morning. He opened his drowsy eyes and placed a gentle kiss on the tip of her nose. Good morning. She said quietly and tried to move out of his embrace. Tam tucked her close. Why are you angry? He placed light kisses all over her face. She let out a sigh. It's still Liana. She bring back her tears. He bit her cheek. My wine. He corrected. She looked up at him. Then why were you with Liana last night? He ran his fingers through her hair like a mother consoling her baby. Didn't you say I wouldn't work with her anymore? I just went to tell her I won't work with her anymore, she began arguing. He trilled her hair strands. She blinked several times with a pout. Is that all? She sniffed, meeting his soft gaze that ran all over her delicate features. Do you think I'm lying? Don't you trust me? She shook her head vigorously. I just hate the way she stares at you. Even five years ago, she said you are sending me abroad because you want to marry her and I'm just a little girl who can't make you happy. She murmured, snuggling close to him. I have been longing to hold and see this little girl. She knew I'm falling for you, that's why she was talking nonsense. Did you believe her? Her heart skipped a bit and a smile tugged up to her lips. At first, I thought she was right because you were forced to marry me. And I told this to Grandpa. He said I shouldn't believe anyone unless you tell me this by yourself. And if you wanted to be with Liana, then no one could have stopped you. Other than that, the way you held me the night before my departure was enough for me to know your affection for me. She said in a low tone, drawing invisible circles on his chest. Very awake that night. She nodded, placing her chin on his chest and looked up to him. I also had sleepless night like you. Then pressed his lips against her temple. I'm sorry I wanted you to achieve everything you deserve. You could have studied here, but the way you were taking responsibility at such a young age, I didn't want you to get distracted by fear or relationship. He mumbled, letting out his sigh. I know I can understand. She glanced at her and his clothes. We are still in these clothes. She propped up on her elbows. Stay. He pulled her back, but his phone rang. He let out a sigh and answered the call while Wine climbed out of the bed. She went to freshen up and came out after 20 minutes, but Tim was still on a call. She went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. Time passed and the breakfast was ready. She decided to bake some cookies until Tim comes for breakfast. Just then she gasped as he wrapped his arms around her waist. He scared me. He rubbed his nose on her neck and hummed. Pass me the floor, she said as he wasn't letting her go. Then glanced at the cabinet and then at her. He smiled mischievously, which Wine didn't notice. Here, as soon as she turned to him, he smashed a handful of floor on her face. Wine gasped, staring at the mess. Then erupted into laughter. My little wife has grown into an old lady. He laughed. Tim just wait, she said through bitter tears and took a handful of flour while Tim ran away. Wine ran behind him. You have to pay for this, she yelled from behind. Catch me if you can. 
him, looked at her from his shoulder while grabbed him by the neckline from behind. Caught him. She smashed the floor on his head. Now clean this mess and raised his purse. Why me? Because he started it. He nodded at fling her hair. All right. They both sat, breathing heavily. In here is thing I want to apply for a job. I can give you a job in my company. She shook her head in denial. But you must give me a job according to my qualifications and experience. You must not treat me as your wife but an employee. He nodded, patting her cheek. Lansky. Three months have passed since Wine's return. Then and Wine's feelings for each other have deepened. Now Wine was reclining on the bed reading a novel when the door opened revealing exhausted Sam. He threw his coat on the couch and loosened his tie. We are back. She kept away the novel. Then home then climbed on the bed, wrapping his arm around her waist and placing his head on her stomach. Yes, he nodded against her stomach. And now I need some peace. He rubbed his nose against her stomach. All right, then sleep. He moved up and buried his face in the crook of her neck. Hand paper soft kisses over her neck. I love you. One second, I love you too. She kissed his head, and let out a sigh of relief, and snuggled further to her. They stayed in silence without uttering a word, just their heartbeats could be heard. Then, he hummed in response, I have something to tell you. She mumbled, trailing her fingers in his hair. Mm, I... She stopped, then looked at her. What's it? He asked her skinny and pegged her lips. She covered his face and caressed with her thumbs. I'm pregnant. He said straight with wide eyes. What? We are going to be parents. Tham broke into a wide smile. Really? She nodded. He pulled her into a hug. Thank you so much, Ryan. I love you so much. He said, feeling overwhelmed. I'm so happy. He kissed her forehead.